Open up your map and go to Sapphire Ridge. You're going to fast travel up to Carved Pathway, walk down and left to Eroded Passage, and get ready to kick some ass. Circuits, primarily going to be AoE stuff, so we're looking at Polar Pirouette Melee Art up in the Ice Tree. Down in the Fire Tree, we're going to be using the best skill in the game, which is Ragnarok. You should be using this anyway. And then the last skill could honestly be used to complete this entire challenge if you're feeling ballsy enough. It is called Karma Scale, and it is the guard art inside of the Wave Tree. It is your bread and butter. Make sure you have it. Equipment-wise, you can use whatever you want. I'm using the Warkeeper and the Infinity Spiral Drill because I'm trying to make Kamina proud. Other than that, just use stuff that's going to help keep you alive because that's really the goal at the end of all this. We are going to be using the Electricity Tree, but a pro tip, it actually gets an extra dash if you select the right perk. So it's worth it if you're trying to get around quickly. But that won't be helping in endless mode. In we go. I'm going to go ahead and skip forward because I'm sure you're not having issues right here at the beginning. That being said, let's talk about elements. Ice is going to be highly effective against the red spiders. I generally recommend using it anytime you're using your combat arts, but if you're not, if you're just using melee attacks, stick with neutral, and we'll talk about why in a second. Fire, however, is generally weak against the red spiders, and you should try and avoid it if you can, unless there are green spiders around, because it is highly effective against them. Obviously this creates a balancing act that you have to do with your elements and in this balancing act I always recommend going back to neutral as often as humanly possible. By going back to neutral you're helping fulfill two goals that are vital in keeping you alive through the entirety of the endless challenge and that is keeping a low overload and keeping high SP. I can almost guarantee that if you overload or run out of SP you are going to die. So let's talk about how to keep those things in check so you don't die. Attacking neutrally is absolutely the easiest way to keep from overloading, and if you do overload, just switch to neutrals. You can see right here how quickly I'm going to build up overload just by attacking a couple enemies. Uh, I have over half. Now switch back to neutral, and this will all go away. The only time I recommend using elements is when you're using your skills. However, to use your skills, you have to have SP. So in order to keep your SP high, you need to attack as much as possible. This is accomplished with dash canceling. If you're going to be dash canceling, you are just attacking for a full combo, dashing at the end of it, and then continuing the combo. If you don't know how to do this, go to Rookie Harbor, walk straight up, go to the info center, go to the basement, talk to the sensei, and he will teach you all about dash canceling. So when you get a bunch of red bugs on the screen like this, and you need to use your ice skill, you're gonna have the SP you need to do so. And voila, just like that, all the red bugs are Okay, well, most of the red bugs are gone. You're immediately going to switch back to neutral and start swinging away. This will kill off any overload you got, and it is also going to immediately rebuild all of your SP back up. And you're going to need it, because now there's a bunch of green bugs. So we're going to switch to fire element, cast Ragnarok, and this will weaken them up, but it will not kill a lot of them, because they're strangely more resilient than the fire bugs. That being said, they are brought down to a health where they're going to die with a couple dash cancels or whatever skill you choose to use next. Speaking of skills, you may have noticed that we haven't used our wave-based combat art yet, but now we are low health, so we are going to. Hold down guard, activate your combat art all the way to level 3, and we're actually going to hope that we take as much damage as humanly possible here. The more damage we take, the more damage we do and the more we heal. So you can see here we're back up to about half HP after that combat art, even though we are probably at about a quarter or less before activating it. Now the issue is, is when you activate this combat art, it immediately puts you into a critical state. So if you have full HP and you activate it, it will knock you down to like 100 HP or so. But you heal based off of the damage you take. And it's this fact that makes this combat art so dangerous because if you activate it, get knocked to no HP, and then don't take any damage at all during its duration, you're going to leave the combat art with absolutely no health. Which, of course, is a problem. The reason this can happen is because these enemies, they don't melee attack. They just sort of use random little ranged attacks. So if you want to, you can try and time it so that you see them casting, and then you activate the combat art, so you're guaranteed at least some damage while you have it activated. Of course, then you risk that you may get interrupted or take damage that would actually kill you during that time. Lucky for us, we have not taken any damage that would kill us, and we are currently crossing over the 5-minute mark as we speak. 
I hope that seeing this makes you realize that it's actually pretty easy to get to 5 minutes and that you can do it yourself. It's really as simple as rinse and repeat everything that I've shown you. When there are a lot of green bugs, you're going to use Ragnarok. When there are a lot of red bugs, you're going to use Pirouette. And when you're almost dead, you're going to use Karma Scale. Follow those easy steps, and you're guaranteed to have this achievement in no time. Well, in like five minutes, I guess. That's the main tutorial. You can go ahead and leave now. I don't mind. However, if you're still having issues or just want some extra advice, I'm going to give a few more tips and a few things that I normally think about while I'm doing this. First off, you want to really try and avoid getting hit. Now, I know it's unavoidable. Sometimes you just can't dodge through all these little sons of bitches. They're all over the place. But when you get hit, you have a chance of getting procced. And if you get procced, you're probably screwed from casting any of your combat arts for that time being. So if you do manage to get procced, do not worry about trying to cast. Instead, just try and dodge as much as possible until your proc goes away and then try casting. Otherwise, you're going to get interrupted and then probably take more damage and it just becomes a pain in the butt. If you are too low on health, then you may have no choice but to try and eat a sandwich really quick or something to keep you alive until you can cast. Because the reality is, if you're almost dead and you're also procced, you're probably guaranteed to be dead here in a few seconds because there is no possible way for you to get off your guard art in time. So you might as well just instead eat a sandwich or something that you can do in between the damage from the proc. The next bit of advice I can give is to not be like Emily. Don't be afraid of the bugs. If you see a massive group of them, that should be a warm invitation for you to just dash cancel straight through them as much as humanly possible. Because, as I mentioned earlier, they don't do melee attacks, really. They shoot webs, and they do these little ranged attacks at you. So, when you see a large group of them, that is a massive amount of SP just waiting to be gathered up by doing a huge dash cancel straight through the center of the group. I'd also recommend not trying to come here and force this. If you are not high enough level, if you don't have good enough gear, if this just isn't fun to you, then there's no reason for you to come here and try to force this until you think you're actually ready or feel like doing this. Obviously, I'm using all gear that is extremely late game, only things that are bought from you know the final town, Rhombus Square, or that are built from items that you can only get near the end of the game. So if, if you just feel like you're not quite powerful enough to do this, if your damage isn't looking at least somewhat similar to what mine is, then I'd recommend, you know, putting it off for a little while and waiting until you actually have all of the circuits you need or until you have the gear you need before you attempt this because it can become frustrating trying to do something when you're just, you know, not quite to that point yet. This next bit of advice is a little bit irrelevant to the achievement, but still relevant to the Endless Challenge in general. And that is staying neutral at the beginning of the challenge in order to keep your combo bar up. Now, the combo bar isn't necessary for hitting a specific time, but it is nice if you're aiming to get a lot of points. So, with the combo bar, you're trying to kill enemies at a very steady rate, not so much as quick as possible like in most games with combos. But the problem is, is enemies are spawning pretty slowly at the beginning of the run. So rather than using elements which kill enemies almost immediately, you should be staying neutral so that it takes a little bit longer to kill them, but you can still kill them quickly enough to keep the combo bar alive. Because if you outrun the bar, then you're not going to have anything to kill, and it's just going to go away. The only reason that I chose to do a tutorial on this specific achievement is because Steam recently did a library update, and with it they added a small section to each game's page where it shows the achievements and they also added in little auras behind them to show the rarest achievements and I was really surprised to see that only 1.6% of people had reached 5 minutes in the endless mode. I remember I hit 5 minutes on my first try ever so I thought that hey this seems like a good opportunity to help some other people get what I think is a pretty cool achievement in one of my favorite games in recent memory. This being said, I've pretty much been looking for any reason to release a new video of CrossCode on my channel since releasing the new release Friday episode, probably almost a year ago when this game came to Steam. And with the launch of New Game Plus, I found myself filled with a lot of hope and optimism for my ability to make new content on what became one of my favorite games. Now, I don't think I necessarily needed that update to give me these feelings, but, you know, I'll take what I can get. And even though my voice is pretty shot from how many takes some of these segments took, I am definitely stoked to make some more CrossCode videos. So I'd really appreciate you kicking your feet up and sticking around for some more if that sounds cool. 
because this video is coming to an end. Because I got burn procced like a fucking idiot. Don't let it happen to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.